There's now an easier way to work with your ESP32. Just plug it into a USB port on your computer and instantly see everything about your board. Detailed information, flash memory, capabilities. No matter which ESP32 you've got lying around, even if you don't remember its features, ESP Connect instantly shows you everything, including how much of its flash memory is being wasted. Let's try this one and back up any partition you want with a single click. Or reflash an application partition to clone your setup to multiple ESP32s in seconds. Here's another one I've got lying around. And with the file system tools, explore the files stored right inside your ESP32, preview images, listen to sounds, even delete or upload new files directly into your microcontroller. This incredible web application supports SPIF, LittleFS and FAT file systems, right out of the box. There's even a built-in serial monitor. All of this, and so much more, in one simple elegant web interface. Zero installation required. It's a real game changer. It takes your maker workflow to the next level. Let's dive in and unlock the full power of this remarkable tool. Stay with me until the end. You'll be amazed by what ESP Connect can do. Grab one of your favorite ESP32, plug it into the USB port of your computer, and follow me along by first opening the ESP Connect web application. I have put the URL in the video description. Click the Connect button. The browser will ask you authorization to connect to your microcontroller. Select it and click Connect. You should see the device information page. Some ESP32 boards can't automatically switch into flashing mode. If you're following along, try using a board that doesn't require you to hold the boot button when uploading. I'm using dark mode for this tutorial, but if you prefer light mode, just click this icon here. Right at the top, you'll see your ESP32's name, revision, and unique MAC address. Below that, the total flash memory size and the speed of the crystal, memory type, and connection speed, all detected automatically. Don't confuse the crystal speed with the ESP32's processor speed. The crystal is just the timing reference the chip uses to stay in sync. Remember, this is the information from my ESP32. Yours might show different values depending on the model you're using. On the right, the feature set tells you what your board can do. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and even built-in PSRAM. The chip variant shows the exact model of your ESP32. For example, an S3, C6, or original ESP32. Think of it like the model number of a car. Same brand, but each one comes with a different engine and features. The package size describes the physical form of the ESP32 chip, like whether it's a small square version or a slightly larger one with more pins. It's the same chip inside, just wrapped in a different shape depending on the board design. And at the bottom, there's a security section. The eFuse block version is part of the ESP32's internal protection system. It stores permanent information like security keys and chip identity. You don't need to modify anything here. It's simply showing that your ESP32 includes built-in hardware security. Next is the embedded memory section. Here you can see details about the extra memory built into your ESP32, like PSRAM, which acts as a temporary workspace when your project uses more data, such as images or sound. My board has 8 MB of PSRAM, but yours might be different, or you may have a board without PSRAM at all. You'll also see information about the flash memory. That's where your programs and files are stored. It lists the manufacturer, model, and total size. In this case, 16 MB from Giga Device. Finally, the connection section shows how your ESP32 is linked to the computer. The USB bridge line tells you which chip handles that connection. In my case, a CH343 bridge. It's the little helper chip that converts USB signals from your computer into serial data your ESP32 understands. If you have programmed ESP32 before, your computer probably already has the driver for it. Right below? you'll see the connection board rate. That's the speed of communication between ESP Connect and your ESP32. It can be changed here in the menu. I will show you what you need to know later. Now let's look at the partitions information page. 
my ESP32 board has 16 megabytes of flash memory available. And right away, ESP Connect warns me that a large portion of it is unused, about 10 megabytes. You can see it here in red. That's flash memory just sitting there, doing nothing. We can also see immediately what the other partitions are and their size. Below that, you can quickly identify all the other partitions and their sizes. The application, SPIF, NVS, and more. It's an easy way to see if your flash memory is being used efficiently. If you notice a lot of wasted space, don't worry. I made another tutorial on a separate web application I built that helps you design your own custom partitions layouts. Check it out if you want to get the most out of your ESP32's flash memory. Let's move on to the app section. This page shows details about the program currently stored in your ESP32's flash memory, the firmware that's actually running on your board. At the top, the active slot tells you which app is currently running. In my case, it's the factory app, the default program the SP32 runs. Offset and size show where that app starts in flash memory and how much space it occupies. Project, version, build are information about the SP32 framework used to build your app, not your sketch itself. It shows which version of the core your firmware was built with. Entry address and segments are technical details showing where the program starts and how it's organized inside memory. Next, we have three sets of tools designed to work with the different file systems your microcontroller might be using. Depending on your board and partitions, some of these tools may be dimmed. That simply means your ESP32 isn't using that particular file system right now. These tools are incredibly powerful and we'll come back to them later in the video to explore everything they can do. If you're enjoying the video so far and you like this free web application, consider supporting the project by buying me a coffee. It really helps me keeping improving tools like ESP Connect and making them available to everyone. Let's see first the Flash tool section. These tools are designed for advanced users because some of them can directly modify the flash memory of your microcontroller, which means that they can permanently erase data or even make the device unbootable if used incorrectly. So take your time here and use them carefully. The first group of tools is all about backups. You can easily select a partition to backup and download it to your computer. The process time depends on the partition sizes. Each backup is saved as a .bin file in your downloads folder. You can also backup all partitions at once, each saved as a separate file. Or even download the entire flash memory of your ESP32 in a single click. For advanced users, there's also the option to read or download data from a specific memory region using flash offsets. And if you ever need to start from scratch, you can completely erase the flash memory from here as well. Once you've made a backup, you can re-upload it at any time to restore your ESP32 exactly as it was. And for those who like to dig deeper, you can even inspect the ESP32's internal registers, or verify the integrity of any partition to confirm the data stored in flash is valid. For this tutorial, I'm using an ESP32 with three file systems installed, SPIF, LittleFS, and FAT. ESP Connect automatically detects which file system your microcontroller partitions support and enables the right tools for each of them. Let's start with the SPIF tools. When you open it, ESP Connect begins by reading the SPIF partition from your microcontroller and lists all the files stored inside. Here I've got a few sample files that I can preview directly, including an image and even a GIF animation. I can also play mp3 files right from the browser. Isn't that amazing? Here you'll see how much space your files are using in the SPIF partition and how much free space is left. You can delete files or simply drag and drop new ones. It's that easy. Before saving your changes to your microcontroller, you need first to take a backup of your current SPIF partition by clicking here. Once the backup is complete, you can safely write your changes back to Flash. And if you ever make a mistake, you can easily restore the SPIF backup you just downloaded. And the best part? If your board uses LittleFS or FAT, 
the tools work exactly the same way. Same interface, same simple workflow. If you think this is a game changer for your ESP32 projects, give the video a like and drop a comment below. I'd love to hear what you'll do with it. You also have access to a built-in serial monitor. Start it to see all the messages your sketch prints out, exactly like in the Arduino IDE, but right here in your browser. When you stop the serial monitor, the connection to your board is paused, so you'll need to reconnect before using the other tools again. And if you want faster speed, you can select a higher board rate from the menu. I recommend using the IS1 your board supports for the best performance. If you're using a board that requires holding the boot button to upload a sketch, like this one I have here, just follow the on-screen instructions to put it into boot mode. For this particular board, I also had to lower the board rate slightly, otherwise it wouldn't connect properly. This is the first release of the SP Connect web application, and while it already does a lot, you might run into a few issues especially since I don't have every ESP32 board variant available for testing. If you find a problem, head over to the GitHub repository and open an issue. Please include your session log to help me track it down faster. Your feedback really helps improve the project and make ESP Connect better for everyone. The easiest way to explore, backup and manage your ESP32s, right from the web. Thanks for watching guys.